Hello everyone, this is Rajesh Isen Gupta and we are talking about threads of visual exploration, textiles and allied practices. We are in the module 1 and this is the lecture 2. So we have already started talking about some of the salient features of textiles and we have looked into some of the ideas. So for example, portability of textiles, how that affects the making of textile, the community history but also at the same time the aesthetics of it. Then we have also looked into the utilitarian parts of textiles and um, how the utility is something that does not really appear after the textiles are made but something that also can affect the making of the textile itself. Now the third aspect which we will be talking about today it will be uh, the artistic aspects of textiles. So for example, if we are talking about the visual exploration, then what are the different ways in which we can see that the visual exploration and textile they can sort of like I mean go hand in hand. So in this case what we see that I mean on screen we have this very rare form of textile that is called Vrindavani Vastra and that is uh, that was made in the state of Assam in um, northeastern India and what we see here this is a late 17th century Vrindavani Vastra and, and now in the collection of the British Museum and uh, in, in this one we find that I mean there are some 12 fragments of these vertical strips which were put together and made into this one particular fabric. So perhaps this this, uh, this textile that, that we see here it was not really meant to be in this particular way but then this uh, textile was collected from a monastery in Tibet and perhaps like I mean the, the border that we see on the top of it and, and then like I mean also the assemblage all those things were done when this textile was collected from Assam. And then later on it was of course it was um, collected by the uh, British Museum. Now what happens in this case that I mean when we look into something like this spectacular textile that we have on screen. So we see that I mean this vertical panels and Vrindavani Vastra is a particular um, kind of textile. It's a, it's a Muga silk woven textile and, and the weave that is used here that the technique that is used here that is called Lampa or Lampas weave and in which we find that there are two warps and two wefts and so in this case what happens is like I mean the warp sort of like the um, it, it gives the base at the same time it also helps in making it stable and then between two warps like I mean the weft thread sort of like I mean passes through and this is one of the ways in which we see that I mean uh, similar kind of techniques like the brocade making and so on they also work out and, and in all these cases we find that they give tremendous opportunity for working with different colors. So the polychromatic way of making these textiles is something that we also see that to be part of the technique. So the artistic aspect when we talk about it, it is not just about visual appreciation of these textiles that all different kinds of motifs that we have on there but it is also about understanding that how this visual characteristic features are ingrained in the way in which this textile is produced, the technique of it. And in Brindavani Vastra what happens that I mean there is a particular history of Vaishnavism in Assam and how this particular kind of cloth that also responds to it. So Brindavani Vastra as we see that I mean this vertical uh, strips of a fabric this um, uh, meticulously woven uh, fabric the silk fabric and uh, with, with the celebrated Muga silk from Assam that, that, that we have here. So Brindavani Vastra is uh, something that was used for wrapping manuscripts at the same time it was also put on the top of the, the, the seat or like I mean the, um, the throne which is reserved for the Vaishnavite gods. Now one of the prime figures of um, Vaishnavism uh, in, in Assam is Shankaradeva and um, in, the, in the 15th, 16th century we find that I mean there was a rise of the Bhakti movement in Assam in which we find that during this time the, the Bhakti or like devotion for the Vaishnavite gods especially the Hindu god Krishna would um, reach its zenith and during this time we find that Shankaradeva was someone who was not much in favor of idol worship.
worship. However, many um, narratives of, of um, from the life of Krishna was prioritized and that is how we find that the mask dance and then like Kshatriya and so many kind of performances they will also come to prominence under the um, influence of Shankaradeva and then the Vrindavani Vastra is also something we find that how this uh, existing knowledge of making this this intricately woven silk in Assam had contributed to making this different form of uh, aesthetics um, uh, that, that is that is prevalent in uh, this textile that we have on screen. And in this ones, what we have there are um, the registers. In this vertical fabric, we have this horizontal registers in which we have like I mean particular narrative freezes which sort of like I mean run and then we have the repetitive um, motifs which would be there. So for example here we have this uh, the demon Bakasur and then like I mean there are also some of the other motifs we will find in which there are um, some of the other demons we have the card demon or like I mean the snake and so on all of the stories which were been delineated in the Bhagavata Purana. So all those stories and those uh, recognized uh, motifs from these stories, all narrative motifs, figurative motifs, we will find them to be um, 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 utilized here in the Vrindavani Vastra. So by using these motifs from the Bhagavata Purana, what we find here is that I mean they sort of attest their uh, close alliance with Vaishnavism but also it is not just any form of Vaishnavism but after the Bhakti movement in which like the life stories of Krishna and all these performative aspects, the miraculous activities of Krishna, they are prioritized. And that is the reason there was a need for this kind of narrative uh, um, uh, motifs that, that, that we have on these textiles because not too many uh, woven fabrics we will find that would have figurative narrative motifs and Vrindavani Vastra for that reason remains one of the many, uh, one of the few um, um, kinds of textiles in the Indian subcontinent which would have extensive narrative and figurative motifs featured on them. So, while looking at the visual exploration what we have here, it kind of like I mean looking starting with the um, the visuals like I mean what kind of visual are we looking at what kind of motif they are if they are geometric motif if they are floral motif if they are motif which are found in the nature or if there are motifs which are much more figural and then what kind of figural motifs that we are talking about here. So all these different questions or like the layers of iconographic analysis that can lead us towards understanding that I mean in what context these textiles are made, uh, were made because they are not being made anymore and then in we, we can also like I mean through this particular like I mean this this visual peculiarities we can also trace them back to like I mean the, the contribution of Shankaradeva then like I mean the rise of Vaishnavism in Assam and then of course like I mean its impact on the visual and material culture. So these are the ways in which we find that the artistic aspects like I mean in which we see that I mean there is skill there is a bodily engagement of the of the makers of the textiles but also at the same time the intelligence like all these things come together in making these textiles and showing a figurative uh, textile in this um, regard is is um, significant because we can we can also think that i mean how making this particular ways of, of um, the, 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 the narrative, the figurative motifs but not as a complete narrative but in repetitive format. It requires particular kind of skill, particular kind of decision making. So all those things we find that I mean certainly that some of the ideas that we usually connect to um, the so called artistic works like how decision making is part of that, how um, innovation and how a particular kind of like I mean skill 
and 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 also like i mean you know what is the pre existing knowledge what kind of new knowledge has been contributed to um, um this this production technique so all those different aspects we definitely see them to be featured in this textiles so this this kind of examples also make us think about like i mean what is this idea about whether textile can be just considered as so called decorative art minor art or there need to be much more expansive ideas about understanding what are its um, um relevances in in uh, studying visual and material culture and whether understanding this aspects would not just make us appreciate textile more but also whether this can all help us to understand that what is art history and also like i mean how textile art history all those different aspects can be interconnected much more closely just the way we have spoken about interconnected globe in which like trade history and and visual analysis come together and then we can more sort of like i mean think about um, uh, integrating art historical theories and then like i mean the process of making and the visual and the community histories together so then we come to talk about the identification and salient features of different forms of indian textiles so in this form what we will do is that i mean we uh, that there, there are many different kinds of textile that we have uh, um, as as part of our study and what we will do is we'll try to understand it from like i mean the the geographical point of view but also at the um, point of view from like i mean what kind of climatic condition and everything else that that also uh, contributes to making particular kind of fiber particular kind of textile and so on now the map that we have on screen in which we find that india is depicted in this one we see that i mean india is shown as this post 1947 nation state however we also see that i mean how the the this geographical um, you know the borders that sort of like i mean separate india from the other south asian countries so for example here bangladesh we have nepal part of here will be pakistan and then so on and bhutan and so on so when we see them we we do not really think that i mean uh, in in terms of indian textile how those geographical areas can also be uh, um you know part of them however if we look into the history of indian textiles and many of the textiles that we will study as part of this course will predate 1947 and that's the reason when we still talk about indian textiles in that regard we do not talk about indian textiles as like this geographical um, you know in in terms of like the geographical borders which were drawn in 1947 but we talk about indian textiles as the textiles which were made in south asia so like i mean the indian subcontinent will have to have in mind when we are looking into the history of indian textiles now in this land that we find here there are many geographical peculiarities we find i mean of course in the in the northern region we have the uh, the karakoram and the himalayan range and then of course we also have the vindhya range here and then like i mean of course the deccan plateau and then of course the the nilgiri the western ghats and so on so all those different like i mean the rock formation the plateaus and places like that they contribute to diversity in terms of the um, geography and with that we also find that there are many rivers which would be of course flowing in different directions so if there are some of the rivers which would be flowing towards east for the for the for the elevation of the land and so on then there are also a few rivers which will find them to be going towards west and with the with this uh, the path or like i mean the course of this rivers then location of um the the mountains and then the plateau land and so on we find this diversity had also affected a lot of the um, um the agricultural patterns at the same time like i mean of course how the environment is you know affected by that 
Then we also find this tropical climate and the places which are much more closer to the ocean or the sea will have much more humid, the humid climate throughout the year. Whereas like I mean the places which are much more closer to desert. So for example, in the Western India, we have the third desert and so on. So in those places, we will find that how this drier climate also makes a huge deal of difference in terms of understanding the, the geography environment, climate and so on. So these aspects do not just limit to uh, uh, um, geography or just like I mean the course of the river or like I mean the, the tropical climate. But as I have already mentioned that I mean they have a huge impact on the agricultural patterns. So for example, a particular kind of fiber which can be produced in central India like in this this places in the Deccan Plateau will probably not be easily produced in a place in Bengal and for like of course for the kind of soil condition for the for for its proximity to the sea and and of course like I mean you know the humidity and and everything else and the similar thing that we can talk about like I mean something that can be made in this Coromandel region whether northern or southern Coromandel cannot be made similarly in part of like I mean the drier the and the arid regions of northwestern India the same goes for the Himalayan ranges and so on. So this kind of like I mean peculiarities or the specificities that we see in the in terms of like geography, in terms of like agricultural pattern and so on, we will find them to be also ingrained in how the community members have incorporated all these characteristics in making textiles. And that's the reason the kind of decisions we will find it the decisions can vary from the length or the breadth of textiles from like I mean what kind of patterns are incorporated, what kind of materials are incorporated and like I mean the, the, um, the intricacy in skill technique and so on. All these different kind of things we will find them to be uh, um, you know varying when, when this geographical, climatic and all these other components are uh, different. So keeping these things in mind, we will probably like I mean start with uh, looking into some of the primary fibers in our study. So in terms of like I mean fibers, so as we know that I mean all textiles are made from fibers and then when we talk about like I mean um, this, this textiles, so let me just make it very clear that in this course we will be primarily talking about handmade textiles and when I say handmade textiles I do not try to promote a romantic understanding of uh, going back to the pre-industrial time period. However, by handmade textiles I mean that the fabric or the textiles which are mostly mostly hand spun not entirely but also at the same time the which are hand woven and then also like I mean hand dyed and, and printed and so on. Like I mean by that this this sort of like I mean you know comes with uh, this this um, commitment towards sustainability commitments towards like I mean the, the people or the communities who are involved in making textiles at the same time our commitment to local knowledge. Now what is this idea about sustainability? Now in, in terms of sustainability what we see that I mean uh, in, the, in the last 15 years or so we find that there has been a push, the global push towards going to slow fashion and by slow fashion what we see there, this term was coined around 2006-2007 and by slow fashion a kind of production of textiles which were sort of prioritized which is not mechanized and in the mechanized way of production we find that textiles are produced much um, uh, faster than how the handmade textiles are produced. However, in this factory setup, we do not really see that I mean different kind of explorations, different kind of engagement between the, um, the makers of the textiles and the textile production is, is explored or prioritized. In this one only uh, um, in many cases we find that I mean in the mechanized way of production that there is a separation between the producer communities and then like I mean how the production is made and ultimately it does not really contribute to knowledge generation for, for the people who are involved in it. 
also at the same time we find that in the in the faster mean of production there are many different kind of hazardous material which are used and when this residues go back to the nature or like i mean residues go back to the water channels and so on they do not really do much benefit to any of us so for those reasons what we find that if we are talking about sustainability and by prioritizing this handmade textiles if we are prioritizing sustainable practices so this is a need of the time it is not a romantic decision to look back at the pre industrial mode of production now let us look little more into this idea of how people are involved or how the communities are involved in making textiles so in this case what we see that um, there are many groups who would be involved in making different parts of textiles so for example we have um, you know people who would be working in the agricultural field for fetching the raw material then there are also people who would be collecting dye stuff and so on and then there are also people who would perhaps be involved in making spindles making looms and things like that then once like i mean the fibers are collected then there are spinners who would be spinning the uh, fibers and then making them into uh, um, you know yarn and then when the yarns are woven into fabric from making of the yarn to like i mean the entire process of making fabric we find that there are also subsequent stages of washing cleaning and so on so with this things we find that even though we talk about textile producer as an umbrella term we find that there are people who are, would be from the agricultural field to um, um, sectors of carpentry and different kind of like tool making they are all involved in making textile then like the washer people and also like i mean then of course we will find the the weavers the dyers printers and so on a lot of different people who are involved in making textiles so if all this kind of community interaction we find them to be there in the handmade textiles we do not see the same thing to be appearing in the textile cells which are made very fast in a factory setup then like i mean if that is what is happening we are not just losing out on the community interactions but this extensive knowledge which are um, which is which is uh, sort of accumulated by different community members for ages they are also they also remain unacknowledged if we prioritize the mechanized way of textile production so this is the second reason for me to go i mean look specifically into the handmade textiles and not the ones which are produced in a factory setup then the other aspect is also something that is uh, integrally connected to this second aspect and that is the local knowledge so what we see there is that i mean there are there are knowledge systems which have developed by the community members when they have worked closely in a particular uh, with with like i mean the locally available resources or the resources which are brought to them from different sources from elsewhere but also with the ecological conditions and so on so if there are many different aspects of them that were in in a place where water is in scarcity so there the kind of textile production we see them those are not water intensive the places where we find that i mean extensive amount of dyeing and so on those things carry out we find that there are there is a requirement for uh, um you know abundance of water so this this different issues we find that i mean the local knowledge systems have already acknowledged the the environmental and the geographical peculiarities and that is how those kind of knowledges are are employed in making particular forms of textiles so those things we definitely see them to be unacknowledged if we do not talk about the local knowledge systems so some of the aspects we have spoken about uh, already is that i mean how sustainability the people who are involved in making textiles at the same time like i mean the the local knowledge systems are something that those are you know they sort of like i mean prompt me to look into the handmade textiles 
Now, the handmade, hand woven textiles, we also find them to be uh, appreciated much more, and that's because some of the recent uh, concerns we find them to be there in the handloom sectors and um, of course like I mean in the in the um, artisanal sectors that we find them and especially that is relevant for making textile is that um, uh, after the implementation of GST that is uh, good service tax we find that there are many material which are used separately in making textiles as as also uh, textile activist and scholar Archana Shah she has put out this that how and and of course like I mean may, many other textile scholars have also pointed this out that how different textile I mean different raw materials which are employed in making textiles they are sort of like I mean if the good service taxes like I mean employed in different materials instead of like I mean one textile then like there are subsequent stages in which taxes implemented on this uh, materials and that sort of um, exponentially increases the the um, the value the the economic value of the textiles which are then like I mean sent to the market now already like the handloom sectors we do find that it has been in um, much of contestation from the factory made the mechanized textiles I mean the the factory made textiles which which sort of like I mean come out of this mechanized mean of production then if there are also concerns about like I mean taxations and all those things we find that I mean this this issues are not um, addressed properly and then there are also like I mean much chances of how the local knowledge system or the, the community involvement and all those things can be implemented now GST is something that was much needed in Indian economy there is no denial of that and and for that reason like I mean perhaps much awareness about how textiles are produced the handmade textiles especially how these are produced much understanding much clearer understanding of these nuances can make us think about implementation of these taxes and everything else on the material as well as on the finished product so this this kind of understanding i believe that i mean that can that can not only just help us appreciating the textile visually or part of like the art historical analysis but also it can uh, bring greater awareness about um, how textile should be treated and how textile in this case can be treated differently from many other um, craft objects that we have around us. Now with that I mean we'll go back to understanding some of the basic fibers which which we have um, um, you know part of like I mean making the textiles and in this case what we have here is that there are some of the natural fibers as I have already pointed this out that I mean we are talking about handmade textiles in in this course so we will be looking at only natural fibers which are used for making um, textiles so in the Indian subcontinent we have several kinds of natural fibers which are used for making textiles for example uh, perhaps I mean the most important one would be cotton and then like I mean for this tropical uh, climate and uh, and then like I mean also the soil condition and all cotton is something that we find that to be um, uh, cultivated in various parts of the Indian subcontinent now apart from cotton we also have some of the other fibers and cotton is a fiber that comes from plants very similar to um, linen or something that comes from flax and then also hemp and nettle fiber so these are some of the fibers we find them to be uh, from plant and all of them are cellulose fibers the cellulose fi fibers will find them to be much harder to dye than like I mean the ones which are protein based now talking about protein based the other fibers which we also have um, um, much in use in the Indian subcontinent those would be the silk fiber and then the wool fiber right so silk is something that is silk and wool both of them they come from um, animal sources and so silk would be uh, extracted from silk worms and then like I mean the um, the wool would be extracted from sheep 
or uh, various um, uh, and few other animals. So this, these are the kind of um, uh, the fibers that the natural fibers would find them to be um, incorporated in, in making textiles. And then uh, as, as I have already mentioned that I mean for the geographical specificity, wool is not really something that is found in all different parts of the subcontinent but in specific areas. The same thing applies for silk cultivation. So those like I mean this, this peculiarities we will find that I mean how um, either like I mean procurement of the local fibers or getting fiber from different uh, uh, from faraway lands or other places all of those things they make a huge deal of difference in how textiles are produced. We will get into the details of cotton and its complicated history in the Indian subcontinent in the um, next lecture. Thank you.